Celebration of Unmad 2016, I am Bangalore's annual cultural fest. We bring to you an exciting opportunity to interact with one of the best analytical minds in the country. We have with us this evening Mr. Ravi Vijay Raghavan, Vice President and Head of Analytics at Flipkart. He has been ranked among the top 10 analytics professionals in the country with Analytics India magazine. Prior to joining Flipkart, he was the Chief Data Scientist and Global Head of Analytics at 24-7 Inc., a Silicon Valley-based startup, and a Vice President at Mu Sigma. He's a graduate from IIT Madras, has an MBA from Ross School of Business, University of Michigan, and also holds a PhD from University of Wisconsin, Madison. He also has over 20 patents to his name. Thank you, sir, for being here with us. When you work at Flipkart, every day is awesome because it's challenging, it's fun, and it contributes to your significant growth, both personally and professionally. The analytics landscape has been changing rapidly over the last several years. Today, some of the biggest business decisions are taken based on analytics and data science. Mr. Vijay Raghavan will talk to us about his journey at Flipkart, his analytics, his journey as an analytics leader, and how Flipkart has changed the game for him and for the country. We invite you, sir, on stage. Thank you. What I wanted to talk about was uh, uh, sort of give you a picture and hopefully make it really exciting. Uh, picture of what analytics is in Flipkart. So I think what I'm going to talk about is essentially what we have done, our journey in analytics. I could show you the statistics, but uh, for me, what I saw this week earlier, the picture that I saw was a much more real testament of uh, e-commerce than any of these numbers, right? These are the three biggest uh, markets uh, for e-commerce, right? Uh, you have US, which is a fairly mature uh, market, uh, India, and then uh, and China as well, right? China with Alibaba and uh, JD and so on and so forth. This is what you're looking at when you talk about e-India. You look at internet users uh, in the country in millions. Uh, it's uh, behind China and uh, US, and it'll pretty soon overtake US, and it'll be behind only China. Soon, right, so that's one data point. Right, uh, internet penetration as a percentage of uh, population. I think uh, uh, this is essentially shows how big the opportunity is. If you look at it, right, and uh, people are getting on internet almost on a daily basis. New people, and that's where mobile plays a big role because if you go to tier two, tier three cities, villages, so on and so forth, the only access to internet is through mobile. Uh, and uh, that is the sort of uh, geographic distribution. What do you see here? What you see here is the rural is eating away, right? It's growing faster than the urban, not eating away, sorry, eating away is the wrong word. Uh, rural is, uh, urban is growing, but the rural is growing much faster, right? Uh, uh, from It's grown from in the last uh, four years from 38 to 138, whereas uh, urban, uh, that's what, uh, th three and a half times to maybe slightly over two times. Yeah, this is the scale of uh, Flipkart. Uh, 30 million products, 60 million registered users, I think it's around more like 65 million. Uh, uh, 13 cities, we offer same day delivery, uh, 50 cities uh, in a day, the next day delivery basically. We have 33,000 people strong, uh, 10 million daily visits, I think, uh, and then 70 plus product categories. That's the scale of uh, the business. Why does analytics matter? Why does data science matter? Why does all of that matter in this business, right? Uh, the reason it matters is unlike, uh, uh, the, that's the beauty of internet uh, driven businesses, right? It's everything is captured, every visit, every click, every time you uh, come to a property, whatever it is, everything is captured, everything is in data. So you're not guessing, you're not doing market research with 10 people trying to figure out what your customers are thinking, you have it there. Everything is available, everything is being captured, right? Uh, that's the scale of data we see, right? You see around 10 terabytes of data every day gets generated through all our systems, right? When I talk about our systems, you're talking about uh, logistics systems, you're talking about customer system, facing systems like your app or your desktop, you're talking about uh, uh, our people systems, you're talking about your delivery boys uh, going to different houses, uh, in the handheld devices entering stuff, all of this gets captured, right? 5 billion raw events in a day, 900 data streams, 500 terabytes of data processed, and uh, that's more, it means the number of Hadoop jobs that run and uh, number of queries. So that's the demand for the data, right? 
uh, in the company, right? And why is that important, right? What do I do with the data, right? So very simple thing, right? Uh, uh, was there any other way by which you could come up with something like this? I can't think, maybe there was, but I can't think of any at this point, right? So these are the reading preferences in India, right? I know this at scale, right? Uh, uh, art, I mean, so that's sort of, uh, uh, where are people sort of most interested in business books? Apparently, Andhra and Gujarat. Uh, it's not a, I think I would have guessed some of these things, but uh, competitive uh, uh, literature was uh, Kerala, West Bengal. It's interesting, right? Uh, you can see some of these uh, patterns. Some of these you can guess, some of these you would have no idea. You wouldn't have guessed the Karnataka is very spiritual, but apparently, yes. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, but some of these you can guess, uh, it's interesting, it's interesting, right? Uh, where do you sell, lo uh, like high, where do people wear the highest heels and where do high heels sell a lot? It's uh, interesting. So, it's things like this about consumers which uh, the, there was no other way of figuring out at scale. You will run some uh, workshop in Mumbai, talk to 1000 customers or not even 1000, like 200 customers and figure out things about what their preferences are, but you can't do it at the scale. Because think about this, this is not even just about the purchase patterns, right? Purchase patterns is one thing, which is what I'm going to show next. This is also about your browse patterns, search patterns, everything I know. I know what you search for, you search for. So we know at an average, uh, Bangalore, how many searches came from uh, 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 for shoes and uh, for red shoes, for pink shoes, for shoes with high heel, shoes between size 3 and 9, right? Uh, uh, shoes of size 10, right? Uh, Hawaii chapel, whatever, right? Uh, the point I'm trying to make is you are able to see data at just, just looking at data will give you some insights. We haven't even started doing any fancy analytics, modeling, nothing. Just looking at data gives you a lot of information because the data is at scale. That's the most important thing. That's the key point. The key point is data is at scale. It's actual data at scale. You're not talking about 10,000 surveys, 2,000 interviews, 50, People, you're talking about six crore, the uh, people and their preferences. Now what, you have the data. So how do you leverage uh, analytics for decision making? And then this is essentially what the analytics organization is in Flipkart. You have marketing and customer analytics, growth analytics, marketing customer analytics looks at who are the people coming to our website, how do you get more of them, how do you attract people to come and buy in Flipkart, so on and so forth. Growth analytics is how do you drive an experience that makes them come again and again and again? What are the drivers of growth? What are the drivers of uh, you coming back to Flipkart every month buying something? What are the drivers of you thinking of Flipkart first when you want to buy something, when you want to have a commerce interaction, right? Uh, then seller and marketplace analytics. This is how, means uh, how is our selection growing? See. One is looking at uh, how our consumers are buying, what are, but what is the biggest driver of a consumer coming back to Flipkart is how is our selection? Do we have everything that the consumers need? The seller marketplace analytics looking at, do we have everything that the consumers need, right? The, and what is the analytics related to that? Can you predict demand, uh, pricing models, things of that nature? Supply chain analytics essentially, obviously, uh, once you buy something, you have to get it to the, once consumers buy something, you get it to the consumers. Analytics around how do you make that more efficient, how do you drive more NDD, next day delivery, same day delivery. Now it's in 13 cities, how do you make it 15 cities, what are the uh, uh, learning from data, what are the challenges, what is working, what's not. Uh, risk and fraud obviously, I'll talk a little bit about that. There are a lot of uh, opportunities for risk and fraud and the whole construct of what we call trust and safety is to drive risk and fraud drown, right? Because at the end of the day, why do sellers sell in our platform? Because they believe that uh, they can sell as they would sell in their own store in a very safe, uh, trustworthy manner. Uh, so just some quick examples, right? I won't go through, this is not a technical talk, so I'm not going to go through. Here's a, a work we did to understand what are drivers of con conversion, right? One of the biggest drivers of conversion are your tower days where you have sales and so on. Uh, how, how does competition play into conversion uh, okay, conversion rates? How does uh, search visits, uh, search visits better or browse visits better? Uh, uh, sort of uh, pricing, okay? Offers, uh, mm, sort of uh, 
a mobile mobile carrier so mobile carrier is a driver of uh, means uh, as a driver of conversion it's very interesting right so if your carrier is a it's a 2g carrier with a lot of drop offs conversion drop because you can't even complete your transaction right if your mobile device is not uh, sort of a very sort of uh, powerful one sometimes uh, conversion drops off so there are very interesting drivers of conversion then your classic marketing analytics is customer segmentation right uh, things uh, how do you understand customers along two dimensions value and engagement value uh, is a function of what is value customer value right do they engage with you and, and do they spend with you those are the two important things and here is some uh, uh, modeling work we did trying to predict based on their first couple of one or two weeks that uh, somebody downloaded an app we are trying to predict what is their potential engagement level right so based on their first two weeks behavior if i understand is this going to be a valuable customer or is this not going to be valuable based on that i would drive my investments uh, uh, differentially and try to understand uh, how to quickly engage uh, my high value customers to make them quickly make them loyal and uh, come back again and again drive the right kind of experiences for them and so on so now you understood broadly the customer value but now i take these and start slicing them for them what if i want to attract a certain set of customer i need to understand their persona i understand how they behave and what is it that they want so based on that we run sort of uh, some clustering algorithms and uh, we sort of uh, segment the entire uh, 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 customer high customer value into a bunch of different clusters based on customer value and based on their own differential uh, behavior something like this is for each one of these clusters particularly the high value clusters right the size of uh, the uh, box is uh, the volume of people in each one of these clusters and uh, uh, base, uh, the left hand is the value right so if you have big boxes at the top you would start from there uh, and then we will try to figure out how do you differentially engage with them so that they actually get value the most value out of the flipkart platform Uh, is so what i talked about is a lot of offline analytics right what you do you look at data and then you drive some decision that's analytics to drive business decision then the next gen this thing is how do you drive uh, more systemic intelligence right uh, data science machine learning and so, so the first one is uh, here is a classic example right this is uh, we talked about trust and safety right so one thing we sort of uh, see is you want the Uh, most trustworthy best sellers to succeed in your platform which means you don't want fraudulent sellers in your platform so here is a model to detect so this was a example where a, a seller would log in as a multiple different users and they will give high ratings for themselves and low ratings for the competitor so that uh, 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 our search algorithm will push up uh, sellers with higher customer ratings right so how do you detect a fraud like this right uh, one way to do it was uh, sort of a machine learning algorithm which looks at uh, similarity between different users right similarity is a measure by if they have common sellers or if they buy around the same time it's a some uh, 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 combination a model developed by these things to measure similarity so what do you see in those clusters right that's point as a purple cluster there that's on the one here is that uh, these are very similar users which when you say similar it's probably the same user in this case what you see is the similar user has uh, sort of given rating to uh, 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 different uh, sellers who are in the same space he's bought from the same similar sellers around the same period of time and given ratings and consistently one to a bunch of sellers and five to himself and uh, this is a, a sort of a, a algorithm which can identify these kind of patterns another is uh, looking at being able to automatically extract out price to put it here or uh, uh, and make sure that the right price is presented on the website as it is represented in the product right third last example is address classification right uh, Uh, so here the uh, classic uh, uh, problem statement is you have a bunch of uh, sort of uh, what do you call field executives so today you don't have in india a clear lat long uh, 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 sort of every house is not defined by a lat long uh, a latitude longitude uh, geo position right so which means that today how does it work uh, so you will sort a bunch of addresses then you will give it to a field executive and you'll say it's near bda or this or some some uh, sub area recognition in some manner right can you automate that so that once an address comes uh, the field executive along with the address get something uh, 
which says what's the area it belongs to or where it is, right? Uh, so that he, they can optimize the routing and so on and so forth, right? So again, this is a very complex problem. Why is it a complex problem? Finally, because uh, this is how address appears. So the uh, simple word like apartment is spelled 263 different ways. Whitefield is spelled 24 different ways. This is actual data, right? Because they, somebody will say WHT, FLD and hope that somebody will understand or Whitefield, it will be spelled wrong. Uh, think all kinds of things. Bangalore is spelled 161 ways. I still have to look at all of them. But uh, it's amazing how BLR, B, uh, all kinds of things, right? Uh, so, how do you build an algorithm which actually does that, right? So, basically that itself is a big uh, process. So, it's a lot of uh, uh, basically what you have a sub area list which is labeled by field executors. The labeling itself could be wrong. So, we make two or three field executors label experienced people and so then we sort of do some sort of error deduction through that process itself. And then you run uh, the training, right? Uh, the training, before you train the uh, uh, on the label data, you have to make sure that the address itself is represented correctly. A lot of pre-processing needs to be done. So there are clustering algorithms to figure out, make sure, under, so that you understand that BLR and Bangalore are the same thing, right? And that itself requires a lot of uh, 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 pre-processing and uh, there are a lot of algorithms in the pre-processing module itself. And then uh, the machine learning mo model will sort of based on an address be able to predict a sub area and that's the, uh, then it's then deployed uh, uh, to this thing, right? Uh, so these are some of the use cases, there are lots of them but uh, it hopefully gives you some idea on uh, uh, what we do at Flipkart from this perspective, right? To build a vast set of solutions is, it's not fundamentally not top down, it's fundamentally uh, people are very empowered to go figure out what is the problem. So that's what I tell the team, right? Go figure out what the problem, your, what is the problem your business partners have, what is the problem, what the consumer, more than the business partners is the, what's the consumer problem that uh, you can solve, what is the supply chain problem you can solve, and then come back, just solve it. So that's sort of how uh, it works. So I think at this point I'll just stop, uh, any questions, uh, yeah. When we look at the e-commerce market today, it's highly competitive and yes. uh, many of the customers are uh, price driven, like they Correct. go to a website yeah. and check the prices of uh, Snapdeal, Flipkart, Amazon yeah. and wherever the price is less, they're going to buy there. So uh, how do you think analytics will help Flipkart to uh, ensure customer loyalty? Multiple things, right? So it's consumers will be price driven everywhere, right? I don't think that is going to change, right? Why would, I mean, I as a consumer, why would I uh, find uh, something in two places, the exact same thing and buy the place where it's more expensive? Obviously, I'll buy it where it's cheaper, right? So, consumers will not be. Analytics can play, in fact, the most critical role in this in multiple ways, right? First of all, analytics can drive the most in-demand selection, right? The point is, you may be searching for a blue shirt if I give you the exact blue shirt that you would, through personalization to understanding selection to uh, understand your consumer behavior, if I give the right shirt that you want, you may end up paying a premium. But if I give you the, exactly what you see in every other website, you will probably not pay me a premium. So it's all about, if you look at where you can get your premium, right, it is about driving more personalization, that's purely analytics. Uh, uh, it's about uh, driving the right selection which matches with demand, which is again, uh, purely analytics. And third, the most important thing is, one thing you will see is while people are price sensitive, they are not that price sensitive that if there is huge difference in service levels, uh, they will not pay for it. So, uh, we have seen multiple, we have run experiments, right, where uh, uh, for example, if you have next day delivery, that has a, a huge impact on conversion. So, they are not that price sensitive that they completely do not care about uh, service. So, that is the third piece as well, right. All of these are fundamentally driven by analytics. Uh, this concludes the Q&A. Uh, and also brings us to the end of the session. So it was a wonderful opportunity for us to learn about how the analytics landscape is shaping Thank us you. and how Thank Flipkart you. is contributing to it. Thanks.